You guys, are you ready for this? St. Rose of Lima. She's one of my favorites. Happy feast day. I love her not just because she's a Dominican, not just because one of my best friends is named after her, not just because she looked up to St. Catherine of Siena, another woman I love, but she has taught me so much in the school of obedience, which if we're being honest, is an area I could always grow in. If you feel me, you feel me. She's also the patron saint of Floris, which in a distant dream is something I would love to be someday. But for now, I think I'll just stick to picking out bouquets at Trader Joe's. <laughs> saint Rose has a huge part of my heart. But fun fact, she was actually not born with the name Rose. She was born Isabel Flores de Olivia, but was given the nickname Rose because she was just that beautiful. And at her confirmation, she officially took the name Rose. She was devout and prayerful her whole life and knew in her heart that she wanted to be a sister. But as you can imagine, her beauty attracted many suitors. Now in order to repel the men who were after her heart, she cropped her hair very short, taking notes from St. Catherine of Siena, and actually rubbed her face with pepper in order to cause blisters. Do not recommend, but it's what St. Rose did. And despite these acts, her parents still refused to allow her to join the convent. So she obeyed and stayed at home and eventually was able to join the Third Order of St. Dominic. So more inspiring than these acts of self-mortification, inspired by her desire to live only for Christ, was the disposition of her heart, her single-hearted attraction to the Lord. And because of this disposition in her heart, because of her commitment to the Lord, she was obedient to her parents. She remained at home and served them and joined the Third Order Dominicans and lived a life of prayer and solitude at her home. Despite her practical situation, she still knew that she was called to holiness and she was sanctified through her everyday life, through serving her parents, through tending their garden, to helping them through economic hardship. Towards the end of her life, she even opened up a room in their home where she could serve the sick, the homeless, and the elderly. And by the time she died at age 31, nearly the whole town showed up to her funeral because she had touched so many lives. And when we look at St. Rose's story on paper, there's really nothing extraordinary. I mean, she didn't even move out of her parents' house. She lived her vocation from her bedroom through prayer, but she was obedient, not only to the Lord, but to her parents, even when it wasn't what she wanted. Despite the hardship, she still persevered in her call to be totally committed to Jesus. She never gave up her conviction that she was made for the Lord, that she was made to be chaste, that she was made to serve people. And she did all of that from right where she was, despite her circumstances, despite her desire for something else. Her one overwhelming desire was Jesus. And so she kept her commitments to prayer and prayed fervently throughout her life and touched so many people simply by her obedience. And so friends, today, I want you to take a look at where you are, whatever situation you're in, ideal or not ideal, and ask the Lord how you can serve him today. Because our vocations aren't something that's happening a few years from now, or when we meet the right person, or find the right order, or feel like we are finally holy enough. Our vocations start now. The Lord has something for you now. You can serve him now. The world can't wait for the gift that you have to give. So friends, let's go be holy. Let's go be single-hearted for the Lord. St. Rose of Lima, pray for us. Bye.